Brilliant ideas, powered by Hyundai Motor. He adopts personae at the centre of which is Ragnar Kjartansson, a slightly wide-eyed innocent who tells truth to power. It's not about the art itself, but the emotions and the ideas that it conveys. I associate cake with your mother. You're invited to a party and you're not sure if he's inviting you or if he's just, he needs some extras for a setting, you know. I never feel like I have imagination. So yeah, yeah, this thing has to happen, you know. Yeah, yeah I have to, yeah, yeah, I have to find that house in in Sweden and burn it down. Icelandic artist Ragnar Kjartansson is about to open his first major exhibition in the UK at the Barbican in the heart of London. He's reckoned to be one of the most exciting artists working today, making his name with performance and video works that combine duration and repetition and dance between the realms of theatre, music and art. He blurs fact and fiction, sincerity and irony. Even when he's a painter, he's performing at being a painter. I've always like, played the role of an artist. It's almost just like playing Santa Claus or something. You just like... Just like, and weird, like people believe it. It's like, I'm an artist. Oh yes, you're an artist. What do you think? <laughs> Where some video arts can seem baffling, Ragnar's work has high production values. It's a lush and intriguing world. He often explores identity by playing different roles. One of his best known works is God, a video performance where he sings the same three words for half an hour. The words Sorrow Congress Happiness, they just came up when I was doing a concert with my band. And I remember I was just like, you know, with like glitter on my tits. And I was just like screaming, Sorrow Congress Happiness. And then the, all the audience went like, Sorrow Congress Happiness. Those words, they, they stuck in me. They're, those were pretty good words. Those were good words, Ragnar. And, and then, I, then I made that piece. Sorrow. Ragnar is in this cheesy end of the pier, pink, boudoir sort of stage. And he sings this really schmaltzy, schmoozy way. Yeah, I'm just really interested in this idea of like the, the crooner, be it, you know, Johnny Cash and Nat King Cole, or Frank Sinatra, and it's all just full of masculinity, but always so vulnerable. And I somehow wanted to play with those, those stereotypes I really love. Everything about it, in a way, suggests a certain naff kind of quality, but actually it's Ragnar accessing this idea of macho-ness and, again, a cliché of, of male behaviour. Listen to Frank Sinatra songs, they are so gorgeously depressing sometimes. And it really sounds like sugar-coated darkness and heroin. The content of his work, what he's saying, is very universal. I mean, love and beauty and envy and generosity and forgiveness. These are just human elements that he's playing with. He teaches us that we have our sorrows in life, but we must sing in art, even if we're singing about our sorrows. Ragnar was born in 1976 in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. With a population of just over 300,000, this remote country has a thriving art scene and is known for its proudly creative spirit. We are like an island away, so you need to do stuff here. You know, you cannot just go to the big city and see the stuff. So you actually need to do stuff in Iceland. There are a lot of dull moments, but there's never a dull moment in the weather, actually. 
that may well lead to people there either being cowed by nature or elevate themselves from this rawness, hence the kind of theatricality that we find in his art. Show me what you can do to me Take me here by the dishwasher you really sense that he's in this world in, in Iceland that's a tremendously creative and enticing world, actually. You sense that there's this wonderful artistic community. Icelanders, they're not retinal artists. It's very much about literature and telling stories, and I think that's what Ragnar likes, it, that his work is discussed, and it's the story that becomes important. No matter where you come from, it always shapes who you are. You know, I try to be an international man of mystery. But you're always tied to the place you come from. Ragnar is an artist for whom almost everything is potentially interesting. He's fascinated by cliches and stereotypes, a theme he explores in Scenes from Western Culture, a series of videos that first went on show in 2015. Western culture is taking over everything, silencing everything else. And so I created these tableaus and was very inspired by Antoine Watteau, like the French court painter who just painted the court in 18th century France just being idle. But there's always like, you always feel death and destruction looming in them. I think with scenes from Western culture, what you're looking at is a series of sort of vignettes which on the one hand look idyllic, but actually are somehow undermined the longer you stay in the room. We have a built-in expectation that film will reveal to us a narrative, and Dragnar is obviously playing with that form that in his films nothing will happen. These very still moments that are that are somehow also like loaded with, you know, history. You know, like the scene where the rich German children are playing in the park in Munich. I mean, it's it's Munich and it's rich German children. It's like, it's where the the greatest, most disgusting thing in human history was like kind of created out of that. And then the boat is in Swiss landscape. Swiss landscape in the 19th century represented uh, like a longing for the unknown nature, the wild. But like in the 21st century, Swiss landscape is just like bling. It's just like, it just represents something expensive. All the locations are somehow like culturally charged. It all feels very much like nothing. I have that really eerie feeling about Western culture. This burning shed, I think that's actually the sort of dark heart of that piece, which says actually Western culture in its ubiquitous appearance in everybody's lives has actually got a very dark heart. It's all very straight and proper. And I find like, I find properness, like I find that much more crazy than, than like any camp crossdresser. I just find that very understandable, but like proper stuff, I just like find that fascinating and like perverse. <laughs> From sculpture to singing, painting to film production, Ragnar Kjartansson is a contemporary artist who makes you see things differently. He's famous for his long performance artworks, exploring the idea of role playing and stereotypes. However, his early years were coloured much more by theatre than the contemporary art world, as he was born into Icelandic acting royalty. My first memories are of like people with sideburns drinking Campari. It's like there was a lot of parties. I feel like relaxed around, you know, loud, superficial actors. It makes me really calm. That's like, ah. My parents were having like marital problems. And then like my father put up a play called Divorce and my mother starred in it. You could feel like the family, the home tension somehow being on the stage. It just feels like natural that the personal is public and the public is personal. And I don't really sense the borders you should have. I thought he was going to be an actor. There was no question. And he said, you know, mother, I and my friend, Marcus, we took an exam into the art school. And it's such fun. I wouldn't dream of being an actor. 
when I went to art school and somehow like really realized what a fantastic thing conceptual art and, and the 20th century is. Then I also just like somehow realized like that this really close relation to the show business world I grew up in and then the, the serious performance art world that there wasn't, there wasn't really much of a difference really. Obviously there's a big history of performance art but because his parents were involved in theatre his take on performance actually comes from that. He's broken the taboo of theatricality. Ragnar stayed close to home to make one of his best-known works, a series of videos he records every five years with his mother, celebrated actress Gudrun Asmundsdottir. You think at first this is a great scene of maternal love and admiration, and, and then she spits on him. He telephoned to me and said, Mother, I'm going to do, do some spitting and so on. Would you care to be with me in it? And I said, yes, of course, darling. I do everything for that boy. Who's going to spit? Am I going to spit on you? Or are you going to spit on me? And he said, well, I think you're going to spit on me. I thought, what a relief. We just meet at my mother's house. We put ourselves in front of the bookshelf and she spits, and after she spits, I take a shower, and, and then we have this coffee together. So it's some kind of a, yeah, it's some kind of a, a, a ritual, I, I guess. I have always just like gone into the piece with the, with the mindset of somebody who's been to art school, and I just like, I am here, I'm being spit at. That's like, you know, <laughs> that's what you learn how to perform in art school. She makes up a, uh, like a role. In my imagination, he is some, somebody well-dressed, and we call them the Vikings who went abroad and caused the crisis in Iceland. The people lost their homes. I imagine he's one of them. And it's easy to spit, don't you think? Uh, it's called the uh, the paradox of the actor. Basically, is that if you if you want to convey true emotion, you have to be fake. You have to be a really good fake artist to convey something true. And, and Ragnar knows about this, and he puts his mother on the test. And she has to choose. You know, are you going to perform the mother, or are you just going to be my mother? You have to spit on me. I must say, at first, it was a joke. We both find it a little bit funny. <laughs> Five years later, and then ten years later. 15 years later, it became more and more serious. I feel it's interesting to see us age, how our relationship changed. It's all there somehow. And, and I think it keeps him grounded. You know, to have your mum spitting on you every few years, it's a reminder of the pecking order in a family, isn't it? From performing in his mother's living room to performing on the grandest stage of all, the Venice Biennale, where in 2009, Ragnar represented Iceland. His friend from art school, Marcus Andresen, curated the exhibition, which featured Ragnar's longest performance yet, this time looking at the stereotype of the male artist. He stayed in Venice for six months, painting a portrait of fellow artist Paul Hauke Bjornsson every day. And it was always this idea like that, that the male artist who you know drinks a lot and smokes a lot is like some kind of the true artist. It started with you know the performative painting of Pollock and you know all these things where he's splashing paint. And then people started to take pictures of Pollock, not of the paintings. I mean they're ugly, of course they're just mayhem. But him, you know, doing this painting, that was the image. That's what sticks with everybody. But I was like, like like almost what you were taught, like this is how to be a real artist, just like chain smoking and drinking and doing big ass macho canvases. I think it maybe it was like 148 days of performance. Yeah, the daily routine was to like wake up with a headache and a heavy heart and, you know, take a little boat and cross the Grand Canal and go to my studio when we would just start painting. He was always wearing this speedo pants with, with a yellow stripe, which I thought was really compositionally important.
we would just smoke and drink. And then like we would just do that all day. And then we were just like anyway drunk and been smoking, so we drank some more. It had to have an effect on him. If you look at the paintings, you can see it, how different the days are, how some days are good and some days are bad. And you know, there is real anxiety in many of these paintings. It's very disarming because these paintings aren't terribly good. The idea of the bloke standing there in his speedos is completely upsets that idea of the romantic artist. Is it valid to make work that is deep and sincere? Can you do that in the 21st century when so much water's gone under the bridge? And I think the strange thing that comes out of it is that through dealing with cliché, he actually emerges with some quite potent truths. These pants, they're called like Speedo Endurance. <laughs> so it's like, it was like especially made for endurance performance art. At the Barbican in London, Icelandic performance artist Ragnar Kjartansson has just opened his first major UK exhibition. His work is a beguiling mix of cliches and characters he weaves into a variety of media. The exhibition brings together works from his entire career, including the piece he's best known for, a nine-screen installation called The Visitors. It came about when Ragnar invited his friends from the Reykjavik music scene to a house in upstate New York to create a very special artwork filmed in a single take. Rokeby Farm is one of these uh, beautiful old villas from the 19th century up in the Hudson Valley, which one by one have been turned into museums, except for this one farm where you still have the family living there. They live their own weird, gorgeous, bohemian lifestyle. They really adopted us into their like bohemian castle. It was like all my fantasies about what I wanted to like experience boom, were there in that house. So I stayed there for a month. And slowly this idea came about that the musicians would be dispersed all around the building and they would all be performing one and the same song. It's on the one hand very intimate, on the other hand very grand. It's beautifully presented. These are individual video portraits of the musicians. But on the other hand, you're aware that you're experiencing a collective moment. You feel a bit like a voyeur going from room to room seeing all the performers in their corners, some of them smoking cigars and knocking back the whiskies. And Ragnar sort of slowly sinking and wrinkling in the soap suds. He's singing this melancholy song, the words of which are a poem by his ex-wife. But on the other hand, you have this transporting, glorious music, which is profoundly uplifting. I think of it as some kind of a, like a Chekhov musical almost, you know. It's really like a Chekhovian situation. And just this like warm world weariness and nothingness and nihilism, but in this all this like, in all this love. <laughs> so you have the repetition, but you also have the light changing, the fact that the afternoon is waning. It's one of the best days I've never had. And that's the magic about it. And everybody who sees and witnesses the piece feels that magic. I think The Visitors is probably one of the best works created so far this century. I think it's an extraordinary work. It's really good to have a Billie Jean, you know? It's really like, I feel it's like my Billie Jean. It's like a piece that like, that just, you know, you know got everywhere and, you know, became a hit. But I don't think it's like, it's like, it's like you know, no, nothing, uh, nothing I do is hugely important. The centerpiece of Ragnar's Barbican show is Take Me Here by the Dishwasher, Memorial for a Marriage, which features 10 troubadours playing live and a clip from the first Icelandic feature film ever made in 1977, starring none other than Ragnar's parents. Show me what you can do to me. 
I thought I was going to stay 10 minutes. I stayed for about three hours, just kind of hanging with these rather beautiful young men, sort of strumming away and filming the background with his parents making love. I thought it was a clip from a porn movie. In the uh, dawn of Icelandic filmmaking, there was this film made uh, in which uh, his mother and father enacted. My mother is a desperate housewife and, and my father is a plumber who comes to fix the dishwasher and, and they have a little conversation which ends on the great sentence. Show me what you can do to me Take me here by the dishwasher I'm desperate And somehow like create a, like a mantra out of a conversation about having sex by the dishwasher and it really becomes weirdly spiritual. Uh, you feel as a spectator that nobody would mind if you lay on the floor and got your kazoo out and joined in. It's some kind of a weird monastery <laughs> they're in. <laughs> it's like a weird erotic late 70s monastery. Ragnar always had this idea that perhaps his uh, conception was even taking place in front of the cameras. He's made on film. And this little joke is something that has stuck with him and, and he just he just decides to go all the way into it and, and make it into something grand. There's something about the, the relationship between the couple in the film and our own sort of languorousness, which of course the music and the troubadours then ramp up. These young male beautiful things that are with guitars and like my mother is like this kind of dominant figure there like masturbating on the sofa. <laughs> and. Uh, be, it sort of became a piece about objectifying the male. And I'm a bit interested in the objectification of the male, being a big admirer of the feminist art movement. To like turn to turn that role around. And it's like the weird thing with repetition, that like you just repeat something and it just always becomes spiritual when you repeat it. It's just like the essence of our... Uh, yeah, it's like the essence of our idea of, of, of the godly or something. It becomes uh, something divine, something magnificent, but as I'm sure you can imagine, if, if you just stay in, the, in bliss forever, in, in, the, in the state of orgasm forever, it's, it's, you know, it's not that great. Of course, we divorced for, I think, 25 years ago. <laughs> but still, it was the beginning of Ragnar. <laughs> Whatever role he's playing, Ragnar's witty and generous take on life is making waves in the art world and beyond. His thirst for new ideas makes him a truly 21st century artist. I always like to quote uh, my, my, my mentor Kanye West in it. Like, he said, like, you know, in, in, in the song Power, it's like, I'm living in the 21st century doing something mean to it. You think about performance art, and he's taken that into a new direction. You go through watching some films feeling absolutely bored. Then you're in the state of absolute kind of like religious kind of meditation. To absurd, to humour, to sadness. It kind of mirrors the human condition. Ragnar is uh, everything you wanted uh, your favorite artist to be like. It always has this nuance, well, I could do that. What, what a nice idea. I can, I, can, I can easily relate to this. He lights up a room, and we can all do with a bit of that these dark days. Like recently, I really like started, I'm starting to feel like an artist, like for real, like recently. I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a middle-aged person. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, you know, well, this is what I am. That's okay. Take it or leave it. Brilliant ideas powered by Hyundai Motor.